Merry Christmas, everybody. I wanted to talk about Captain Beefheart and his magic band. Uh, I was going to do like a, uh, and I might uh, in the future at some point do a top 10 Captain Beefheart songs list, but I honestly don't know his whole discography yet. And even the albums of his I have, I don't listen to some of them as much as other ones. So I'm going to just slowly or, or quickly go through these and maybe give a rating for each album. And first of all, I got this box set, uh, I think there was an unboxing on my Larry Graves TV channel last year. It's Captain Beefheart, Sun, Zoom, Spark, 1970-1972. There's one of his uh, paintings. And at first I used to think his paintings were just terrible. And now I ac actually really appreciate them. Here's the captain. Oh, also at the same time, I'm going to talk about two excellent Captain Beefheart books, if you're a fan of Captain Beefheart. There's a big, there's a really nice picture of him smiling. <coughs> and I always, or I usually edit my videos because of course I stumble, and I make mistakes, and I burp, and I fart. But I'm not going to this time. But anyway, this box set contains, and th these were albums I had never heard. They contain Lick My Dickles Off Baby. I'm gonna, oh sorry, I'm reading the uh, song titles, that's why I was confused. Lick My Dickles Off Baby, uh, The Spotlight Kid, Clear Spot, and then there's just one with outtakes and demos. Now I believe these are not in order, but I'll try and get them in order. Okay, they're in semi-order. First of all, now this is most Captain Beefheart fans' favorite album, but I honestly have not listened to it enough. Uh, I've heard it a couple of times, and for me it's just okay. Uh, it is safe as milk. And of course, uh, there's a famous picture of John Lennon in his... Uh, living room and there's a sticker from this album on his wall. So he was a fan of this album also. But uh, Zigzag Wanderer I love and Electricity, but I really need to listen to this more. And they call me a Captain Beefheart fan. And this one uh, I've never gotten into either, so I can't even rate it. It is strictly personal. But you Captain Beefheart fans out there, just let me know what you think about all of these. Next up is the famous trope mask replica produced by Cap produced by Captain Beefheart. Produced by Frank Zappa. What a crazy album. And a crazy album cover. And like most fans that uh, heard this for, for the first time, I hated it. And then I just kept playing it, and now, of course, I love it. It's not my favorite Captain Beefheart album, and it's certainly not the first one I would su suggest people who haven't heard Captain Beefheart listen to, because you probably won't like it right away. But some of the songs I absolutely love. Other ones I think are just good, and then some of the uh, outside recordings, the field recordings, or him just speaking... I'm not, not as crazy about But my absolute favorite songs are Ella Guru and Old Fart at Play, The Blimp and uh, Veterans Day Poppy and Pina and Moonlight on Ver Vermont. But there's quite a few songs in this I love. I would give this an 8 out of 10. <coughs> Once again, I've I think I maybe played this once. Uh, Captain Beefheart and his magic band, The Mere Man Sessions. Sessions. This is another uh, album that I think has a higher rating than Trope Mask Replica on uh, Rate Your Music. And 
I do like it, but I still, it still needs to sink in kind of the way Trope Mask Replica finally sunk in. And it is, lick my decals off, baby. Like, I, I, I'm very familiar with the start of the album, Lick My Decals Off, Baby, Dr. Dark, I Love You, You Big Dummy. And I love all three of those songs, then the rest, it's like, I, I need to listen to it more. <clears throat> oh my god, I love this album. And I was totally confused when it came in the box set, because this is how it appeared. But I guess that's the way it originally came in the vinyl. It was just the plastic with the vinyl record inside. And a, and a sheet. But this is probably the... Uh, if you haven't heard Captain Beefheart, it's kind of a good place to start to get used to his vocals. And he, it's kind of a... A commercial record but not in a bad way in a good way it's it's just great and he sings great uh, my favorite songs are too much time nowadays a woman's gotta hit a man sun zoom spark and clear spot and big-eyed beans from Venus but the whole album is great I would give that a 9 out of 10 now <clears throat> He did release uh, two or three albums uh, when he, he wasn't getting the album sales and he went more commercial, sold out in a way, I guess. And uh, they really don't work. It's, you know, it's not him being the real Captain Beefheart. But they're not terrible albums either. And this one is called Unconditionally Guaranteed. I love his uh, photos. And, yeah, it's just okay. It's like a 6 out of 10. And the same with Captain Beefheart and Magic Band, Blue Jeans, and Moon, Moon Beam, Beams, Beams. It's hard to say. <laughs> Terrible album cover. And it's basically the same, although there's one song on this that is real that I really like and a lot of fans like. It is called... Observatory Crest. It would have been, it would be in my top 10 Captain Beefheart songs. This is kind of in between. It's uh, commercial and not commercial and it's good and not good. It is the Spotlight Kid. And there's some of his paintings. And uh, so that I would give like another 6 out of 10. I would give this a 7 out of 10. Now, this might be, it's in between these two albums coming up. Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, Shiny Beast, Bat Chain Pole. And there's one of his crazy paintings. I just love the whole album. But my favorites would have to be Tropical Hot Dog Night, uh, you know you're a man. Oh, I love that. When I see mummy, I feel like a mummy. Uh, the instrumental uh, suction prints, and even even when I liked this album in the past, there were two or three songs that I didn't like, it's like uh, you know you're a man. And that's the thing with Captain Beefheart. The more you play some of his songs, the more you might actually like the song that you hated at first. And that's the great thing about music. <clears throat> and the other one that could possibly be number one, and if not, it's number two, is his second last album, Doc at the Radar Station. I love all the songs. Hot Head, Ashtray Heart, Dirty Blue Jean, which might possibly be my favorite Captain Beefheart song. Uh, <laughs> and making love to a vampire with a monkey on my knee, which uh, I, I was playing this album in the car with Karen, and, and he swears in the song. We just kind of both burst out laughing at the same time because I had kind of forgotten that he swore in that song, and, and it's just so funny, and yeah. And his, his final album, I've once again never... I don't know if it's the production or 
It's just not as good as Dock at the Radar Station, but I need to listen to it more. It is Ice Cream for Crow. Oh, and I give those two elves. I keep forgetting to rate them. That's a 10 out of 10. And that's a 10 out of 10. And this, for now, is like a, a 7 out of 10. And then there's outtakes, which I listen to a couple of times. I'm not really that into demos and outtakes as much as the original albums. And then finally, due to uh, some infighting with Frank Zappa, his original album of this, which he recorded in the 70s and was never released, and it includes some of the songs from Shiny Beast, including Bat Chain Polar, which is on both of these. It is Bat Chain Polar. And I don't like this. Even the version versions on here, like uh, Harry Irene, Floppy Boot Stomp, they're, they're very good. They're very good, but I, I prefer the redone versions that they did a few years later. But still, it's, a, it's very good. It's an 8 out of 10 for me. This is going to be a long video. And long videos are good on YouTube, from what I've heard. So I'll just quickly say, there are two excellent books on Captain Beefheart you can get on Amazon. This one is really small. That's what he said. Lunar Notes by Zoot Horn Rollo. And his Captain Beefheart experience. I believe that's him there. And his real name is Bill Harklerode. And he talks about his experience with Captain Beefheart. So I highly recommend this if you're a Captain Beefheart fan. Not too many pictures or anything. There he is there. But he talks about the individual albums and the ones he likes and the ones he didn't like recording and the temperament of Captain Beefheart and so on. And finally, this is such a good read. It is by John Drumbo French, who I'm Facebook friends with, but he doesn't know. Beefheart Through the Eyes of Magic. And look at this. Look how big that book is. And the, right, the, the text in it is, uh, it's re readable, like it's small, but it's, even with my eyesight, it's readable. And there is a lot to read, and there's also lots of pictures. you got to have pictures in books. And uh, here's Captain Beefheart. So I highly recommend you get this book if you are a fan of Captain Beefheart. And he talks about the individual songs and some of the albums. Like, he goes through all of Trope Mass Replica. Uh, yeah. So, highly, highly recommended. This cost me, well, it says here the price is $19.95, but that, I believe, is British. So I'm not sure what I got this for on Amazon, but maybe $40, $40 or so. But it's really worth it, like I said. And there's John today. So that's it. I hope somebody's still watching. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Merry Christmas, unless Christmas has already passed. Then forget I just said that.